Hello and thank you for watching this video. As many of you are probably aware, we have passed some important dates that unfortunately went by uneventful as far as our blessed hope is concerned. Even though I considered the evidence that pointed us to the specific time frame to be overwhelming, it certainly was disappointing to find out that this was not the time yet again. As I have stated in my previous video, if an announcement was made by the Trump administration with regards to their intent to release the deal of the century, and if this went out a few days before the window of time that we were keeping an eye on came to pass, that would have served as confirmation of what we were looking for. That confirmation and warning never came, and as such, we knew even before October 31st arrived, that the events presented on this timeline probably did not apply to 2019. Now reading some of the comments posted on the videos that I published over the past six months, it is clear that there are many in the audience who are angry and upset about the fact that I have been looking at specific dates, and I would like to address this at the start of this video. Firstly, when we consider what Paul wrote to the church of Thessalonica, we read the following. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Paul refers in this passage to certain but very specific events that will occur on a specific day and points out that those who are not in darkness will not be caught unaware on the day that these events transpire. So what I've been doing for many years now is searching out this secret of God which His Word tells us He concealed for His glory. This, however, is not the only aspect with regards to our Heavenly Father's secrets that we need to be aware of. His Word explains to us that He intentionally concealed certain things so that those who are considered kings in his eyes could search them out, and whose honor it will be to do so. It is the glory of God to conceal a thing, but the honor of kings is to search out a matter. The Bible also shows us that our Heavenly Father's intent with regards to his secrets is for us to discover them before their application comes about. Surely the Lord God will do nothing, but he revealeth his secret unto his servants the prophets. If we just consider what was written in these two passages and apply what is said in Paul's explanation, we realize that Paul points to a specific day that those who are not in darkness will know when that day arrives. Notice that Paul is not talking about a season in this passage. So often we hear people say, we will not know the day, but we will know the season. That is not what we are shown in Paul's explanation. Based on what Paul says, we will know the day, and that is why I consider specific dates on which the description given to us in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 could apply. In this passage, Paul also associates the announcement of peace and safety with a pregnant woman who is suddenly overcome by labor pains. Now, if we thoroughly study the word of God, we know that throughout the Bible, the woman in travail is associated with Israel and the surrounding nations, the resurrection of the dead, and a specific time during which God's chosen nation will have to endure severe affliction that is intended to bring them back into a relationship with their true Messiah. And this time is known as Jacob's trouble or the tribulation. What I do not understand is why so many brothers and sisters would not want to be part of those who will be called kings and who will be honored for diligently searching out and discovering the secret of our Heavenly Father that Jesus pointed out for us in Mark, and to which both Proverbs 25 verse 2 and Amos 3 verse 7 should be applied. But of that day and that hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels which are in heaven, neither the Son, but the Father. On several occasions, Jesus told his disciples to watch and to be ready in order to be accounted worthy to escape. What were they supposed to watch for? To properly answer this, let us ask ourselves the following question. What does Jesus say to those who are not watching? Remember therefore how thou hast received and heard, and hold fast and repent. If therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief and thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Jesus very clearly states in this passage that those who are not watching 
will not know the hour and will therefore be caught unawares. The opposite is also clearly implied from this passage. If we are constantly watching and searching, we will at some point know the day and the hour, and will then be in a position not to be caught unawares. Will we get it right in our first attempt at searching for an application in which 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 will be fulfilled? God's children have been doing so since Jesus gave the instruction to watch and have up to now not discovered the answer yet. If we fail to discover the answer on our first or subsequent attempts, should we simply give up to avoid upsetting our brothers and sisters who feel that our reliance on the promises given to us in the word of God is unfounded? and that our effort in searching and watching for the Lord's return will have them abandon their faith in Christ because of our failures and limitations. I would say that one would seriously have to look at the quality of that faith in our Savior if one could so easily abandon the most important relationship one could have because of the limitations and fallibilities of others. We know that we are all subjected to the same limitations and need to see them for what they are. Except for Jesus, there is not one person who is perfect. There is not one person who is without sin. And there is not one person who is not limited in his or her's abilities while existing in a mortal body. And we have to deal with life knowing that we will encounter a lot of imperfection and disappointment on our journey towards our blessed hope and eternity. Now for those who feel upset and disappointed because I look at specific dates that have the potential to see 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3 fulfilled, and for those who feel that their faith in Jesus Christ is simply too weak to handle the disappointment that comes with keeping an eye on specific windows of time that could in the future pass us by uneventfully, you really do not have to watch my videos. There are many other channels out there in which all disappointment can be avoided altogether. I, on the other hand, will continue to watch and share what I see with those who have the same desire as I have. And if you follow my videos, even though you may possibly encounter disappointment a few more times, I want to assure you that the chances that you will be caught unaware or by surprise when the blessed day finally arrives would be very slim. We are seeing before our eyes how many prophecies given to us in the Word of God and associated with the end of days are currently being fulfilled, and this is also happening at an exponential rate. So if there has ever been a time during which we should expect our Heavenly Father to reveal the secret of the day and the hour to us before He acts, that time is most certainly now. We are already in the season, and we will soon know on which day we need to be ready to meet our Bridegroom. For those who choose to continue to watch with me, be encouraged because our Heavenly Father will not delay indefinitely, and the time will soon come when we will hear the sound of the trump, and where we will be ready ahead of time as we see the day approaching. So where are we now on the timeline, and what do we look for as we move towards the end of 2019? As I have said earlier, I am looking for situations in which we see events that occur in the world moving us towards the description given in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3, and where we could see the fulfillment of these events that were described by Paul come about. In this passage, we are only told about the events that would occur prior to the escape or the rapture, and nothing about their position in time. The only way, in my opinion, in which we will then be able to discover high watch times at which these events could come about, is to watch and to keep an eye on what is happening around us in the world. We already know that President Trump's deal of the century has a very high probability to bring about what was written in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3, and the secrecy that has surrounded this plan increases that probability in my view. I am of the opinion that Trump's deal of the century will propose the division of Jerusalem, and this understanding is not only shown to us in the Word of God, but also in our enemy's predictive programming, especially in the iPad Go 2 animation. Why am I considering information that our enemy puts out? If you consider what Paul shares in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3, you will see that he points out what those who will not escape will be doing. Those who will not escape are considered wicked, and as such, Paul is essentially sharing the enemy's plan with us in this passage. 
Paul shows us that those who are in darkness, referred to as they, will say peace and safety, and those who say peace and safety are the ones that will not escape. So if Paul had insight into what the enemy would do at the time when great destruction will come over the world, why should we not keep an eye on what our enemy is doing? Satan wants to mimic God, and although he does not know the future, he has the ability to guide events over time towards a specific outcome that he desires, and which God allows him to do, just as in the case of Job. Satan revels in presenting this information as prophecy to the world, to have the world believe that he actually knows the future, while he is simply steering and controlling events to reach his desired outcome. Our Heavenly Father has also allowed us to prevent the enemy from gaining an advantage over us by exposing his devices to us, as we read in 2 Corinthians 2 verse 11. Lest Satan should get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. So if we fail to keep an eye on our enemy's action, we may as well not be watching, because Paul shares with us what our enemy will be doing at the time when our blessed hope will arrive. And I will show you how 1 Thessalonians 5 is linked to the rapture in more than one way as we continue. What is described to us in 1 Thessalonians 5 is our enemy's actions that will lead to bringing Israel to a point where they make an agreement with death and break God's everlasting covenant with Abraham in which Jerusalem and the land of Israel was promised to Abraham as an everlasting possession. When we look at a map of Israel today, we see that this is probably the most fragmented real estate in the world. But a proclamation has never gone out in which Jerusalem as a city was officially divided, and from what I can see, this would be the last straw on the camel's back. As soon as Israel agrees to divide Jerusalem, the apple of God's eye will be touched, and the destruction that Paul mentions in 1 Thessalonians 5 will be unleashed over the world. The intention to divide Jerusalem has recently also been spotted among President Trump's opposition, where Senator Elizabeth Warren, a Democrat, has stated that her view is for both Israel and the Palestinians to have their capitals in Jerusalem, supporting therefore the division of God's city, Jerusalem. We also know that our enemy has shown us in his plans that the deal of the century and the UK's departure from the European Union otherwise known as Brexit, have been set to occur at roughly the same time and that Brexit is also associated in more than one instance with the apocalypse, the resurrection of the dead and the return of fallen angels to the earth, as was the case in the days of Noah. Just today I came across this very strange article in which the conservative manifesto of the Tories in the UK is said to be the Necronomicon. This is a book that was written by H.P. Lovecraft, an illuminist, who describes the means by which one could summon the Old Ones or the Nephilim. I will show you a little later in this video how what is written in Jeremiah 6 fits in with this. At this point we know that both President Trump's deal of the century and Brexit have been postponed after a window of time passed during which both would seem to have had a very high probability of being brought about during a convergence, but where both were yet again postponed. Currently, the deadline for Brexit, which has now been extended a fourth time, is set for January 31st, and the deal of the century was postponed yet again on the day when expectations were at their highest, October 31st, 2019. It is almost as if everything was in place for this plan to commence at this time, but that an order was given that prevented our enemy from carrying out his plans. This would also seem to have happened in such a way that this would prop up the hopes of those who were watching at the time just to pull them down on the day when these events were supposed to come about, possibly to test the hearts and the desire of those who are expectantly looking for the arrival of the bridegroom. As I have pointed out in some of my previous videos, there are several instances in which the collapse of the world's economies has been associated with a storm that will come over the world, and that that storm is in some way associated with Martin Luther. Just today I have already come across two reports in which Deutsche Bank and a British property group listed on the Johannesburg Stock Exchange in South Africa 
have reported massive losses. The British property group Intu's share price lost 82% of its value over the past week on the JSE because of the Brexit uncertainty and Deutsche Bank has reported a much higher than expected loss over the last quarter. A total of $924 million were added for the third quarter to the bank's accumulated losses of almost 4 billion euros over just the past six months. For the largest bank in Europe with $49 trillion in derivatives exposure that has been on the verge of insolvency and Germany also now facing a recession, such losses do not paint a rosy picture and rather point to imminent disaster that will rapidly affect the global economy once the freefall starts. When it comes to the world's economies, it would seem that the dominoes have already started falling, and even though the effects have not reached full impact yet, the signs are already showing and clearly informing us about the season we find ourselves in. Something else that caught my attention in the iPetco 2 animation is what is shown to us on the wall behind the girl holding the apple. On the left wall there is a reindeer and on the back wall there is a white rabbit. Now these two animals are clearly associated with Christmas and Easter and it would therefore seem to be depicting a timeline. I pay attention to these because I know that our enemy uses predictive programming to inform the unsuspecting masses of what he plans to do, showing them not only the events that will transpire but also the timing of those events. Keep in mind that the actual year is not shown to us, only the dates as they would apply to a specific year. The same is true for the timeline that I presented in my previous video. In hindsight, we know that some of these images did not apply to 2019, but it does not mean that they are not intended for a future year. There are images such as the planetary crossing of Mercury on November 11th that could only apply to 2019 and which may point us to a war that could break out around this time, or shortly thereafter. Since this scene in the animation has to do with the splitting of an apple and a shoe standing on a British coin, and these events shown to us in a convergence, we know that what is presented here has a very high likelihood of being associated with an end to the British economy, which is what Brexit is all about, and Trump's deal of the century in which he will likely get Israel to agree to a two-state solution through which Jerusalem will then be divided. As I have previously pointed out, the creators of this animation stated on their website that the girl holding the apple knows that the apple belongs to someone else. And therefore I see a clear connection to what is written in the word of God with regards to Jerusalem and the splitting of the apple which, from this vantage point in time, will most likely come from President Trump's deal of the century. The way in which this is presented also tells me that our enemy's intent is to have these events occur close together in time. And if we consider the history of President Trump's deal of the century and Brexit, we can see that both of these, having the potential to bring about very serious consequences, have been delayed multiple times over the past three years. And both had a very high probability of being executed on October 31st, 2019. Now up to a week before this window of time, I did not know whether these events would be executed or whether they would only again be postponed, but I had to show the possibility even though it turned out to be a false alarm. I look at the earliest possible fulfillment of 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3, and that comes with the risk of being disappointed, but being in a position of having awareness and being ready should events transpire as expected. I cannot tell you with 100% certainty that the next potential window of time during which these events could be executed will once again be postponed or not, and that is why I keep on watching. If another postponement yet again causes disappointment, it is only because our blessed hope has yet again been deferred, and the Bible shows us that when this happens, our hearts are made sick, so it is to be expected to experience disappointment when a high watch date comes and goes without seeing that which we so earnestly and eagerly desire. Hope deferred maketh a heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. Coming back to the timeline shown on the wall, looking at the emergency exit that is highlighted when darkness descends, what this emergency exit represents could fit in perfectly with what we read in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3, specifically pointing us to an escape that will occur when these events come to pass. 
and differentiating between the wicked and the righteous and those who are awake and those who are asleep. The reindeer is positioned on the wall to the left and a vine connects it to the wall at the back, possibly representing the month of December going over into January of the next year when it moves from one wall to the next. The vine then encounters an emergency exit that would seem to position the exit or escape during January somewhere. Three other vines that could be representing February, March and April are then shown with April being associated with Easter. This is of course a pagan fertility feast because a lamb would be the appropriate animal to show if the intent was to point to our Heavenly Father's Passover that occurs at the same time. It is also interesting that the animation even alludes to the darkness that Paul mentions in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all the children of light, and the children of the day. We are not of the night, nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep, as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken, are drunken in the night. But let us, who are of the day, be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath, but to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore comfort yourselves together, and edify one another, even as also ye do. So in this passage, Paul tells us that a peace and safety announcement by those who are in darkness is followed by great destruction that is linked to the tribulation, and from which some will escape, while others will not. We obtain a better understanding of this when we connect what is said in this passage with what is written in the rest of God's Word, and where more detail can be obtained about Paul's statements. We looked for peace, but no good came, and for a time of health, and behold, trouble. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. O ye children of Benjamin, gather yourselves to flee out of the midst of Jerusalem, and blow the trumpet in Tekoa, and set up a sign of fire in Bethhasarim, for evil appeareth out of the north, and great destruction. Ask ye now, and see whether a man doth travail with child. Wherefore do I see every man with his hands on his loins, as a woman in travail, and all faces are turned into paleness? Alas, for that day is great, so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble, but he shall be saved out of it. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, a people cometh from the north country, and a great nation shall be raised from the sides of the earth. They shall lay hold on bow and spear. They are cruel and have no mercy, their voice roareth like the sea, and they ride upon horses, set in array as men for war against thee, O daughter of Zion. We have heard the fame thereof, our hands wax feeble, anguish hath taken hold of us, and pain as of a woman in travail. There is so much that Jeremiah 6 reveals to us about this time especially showing us how the dead that will be raised in judgment and contempt will come against Israel and will be the cause of the great destruction that will come over the earth. We also see that those who are considered wicked in the eyes of the Lord will not escape and will suffer the consequences. In Jeremiah 6 it is specifically stated that the wicked will not be plucked away and this implies of course that the righteous or those who are not in darkness will be plucked away. And in Jeremiah 6 verse 29, we encounter then an indirect reference to the rapture, once again associated with the woman in travail. The bellows are burned, the lead is consumed of the fire, the founder melteth in vain, for the wicked are not plucked away. 
I would highly recommend that you study Jeremiah 6 and look up some of the Hebrew meanings for the words that are associated with this nation that will be raised to bring about the great destruction. I will give you one example in which you will see the link to the Necronomicon that was associated with UK's Conservative Party's manifesto and another strange video in which the editor of Breitbart compared the outcome of Brexit with a zombie apocalypse. A link to that video is provided in the description below. The Hebrew words for North Country that is used in this chapter does not only indicate direction, but could also mean those that were hidden in the earth that will come forth, and that this nation will emerge from out of darkness. The fact that they are all said to be mighty men, that they are an ancient people, and that their language is not known to those alive today, points to the fact that this is not a nation that we know today but that they most likely represent the Nephilim of Noah's days that will be brought back to life in addition to those who have died without salvation. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath is come, and the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldst give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name small and great, and shouldst destroy them which destroy the earth. Also note how this highlighted section in 1 Thessalonians 5 is linked to what Paul writes in respect of the rapture and how this passage in 1 Corinthians 15 is then also linked to 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So given the escape that is mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 3, could this door be pointing to the escape that Paul refers to, and could this animation actually be showing us the timing of this event? I do not know, but I will certainly consider the possibility. If we look at where this door is positioned on our enemy's timeline, it would certainly seem to point to somewhere in January. Now in the previous video I showed you how the imagery displayed on The Economist magazine's cover for the world in 2017 points us to a storm that is associated with a Martin Luther date because of the piece of paper that was pinned to the door and which would then apply to October 31st of any year. This date, however, is not the only possible application of what we are shown in this image. There is another date that is associated with Martin Luther, and that is the day on which Martin Luther King is remembered. This day is January 20th, and would also apply to any year. The tower that is shown in this image could also be associated with a castle, the home of a king, and as such, we have another possible application for the image shown to us, on this card that does not fall on October 31st, but on January 20th. Jeremiah 6 also references the tower in this passage. I have set thee for a tower and a fortress among my people, that thou mayest know and try their way. So once again we have some mounting evidence for an application that may pertain to the month of January before us. These events once again could apply to any year, and if nothing happens in the weeks and days leading up to January 20th of 2020, then we can wait for October 31st of the same year to see if a possible application could apply to that time. Now I am not saying that we should wait until middle January of 2020 to wake up from our sleep and to see if something is about to happen. I am watching intently every day to see if there are any signs that could point us to an earlier escape but given what we know about the world and the important events that will trigger our escape, I would say that the current state of the world's economies won't carry us to October 2020. Could our enemy be planning to bring about both a no-deal Brexit and having Israel agree to split the apple of God's eye in January of 2020? We will have to watch and see, and if the warnings that we expect come before this day, how glad we will be that we overcame the disappointments of the past and continue to watch. If nothing happens, we will probably be disappointed again, but then we continue to watch and search. It would seem that our Heavenly Father has allowed us a little extra time to reach out to more of His people, 
who have been blinded by the enemy and who have no idea of what will soon be coming over the earth. If you believe that the pre-tribulation rapture during which the righteous will be plucked away from the destruction that will follow is not supported by scripture, I would urge you to watch this series in which you can see how the harvest and temple models that are both associated with the resurrection of the dead require a pre-tribulation rapture in order to correctly apply those models to what we read in connection with the resurrection of the dead. If you are also watching and would like to warn others about what could be happening over the next few weeks, please share this video with your friends and family. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Savior yet, please watch this video in which God's love for you is explained. May our Heavenly Father bless you and keep you and may He make His face shine upon you and give you peace that transcends all understanding. Until next time or until we meet in the air, God bless. Jesus' suffering on the cross is a picture difficult to understand. He was betrayed by a friend, arrested and falsely sentenced to death. He was beaten and whipped, a crown made of thorns pressed into his head. Bearing the cross, he stumbled and staggered up the hill to Golgotha. Each step of the journey getting worse, spit on, cursed and mocked. But Jesus never looked back. He kept going. Jesus could have avoided the cross, called down fire from heaven, or summoned legions of angels to rescue him, to save him. But Jesus was not interested in saving himself. He was all about saving you. Every detail of this torturous path to the cross was part of God's plan to bring you to him. We're all broken. We've all messed up and have all made wrong choices. And no one had to teach us as a baby about anger and selfishness. We just came out that way. Sort of a sin covering. But on the cross, with his blood he shed, the Bible says Jesus blotted out our record of sin, nailing it to his cross. The blood of Jesus washes away our sin covering. And his blood is our ticket. Our ticket to enter through a new door, a forever relationship door with God. So what do we do with this great news? The Bible says, if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, it's not enough to believe in Jesus with just your head. You must believe with your heart. Now, there's just one person alone at the foot of the cross. It is you. What will you say to Jesus? Say, thank you, Jesus, for shedding your blood for me. I'm giving you my heart today, Jesus. I do believe you died for me and that you were raised from the dead for me. Please give me a new heart and a new life right now. God hears you and he is answering your prayer. The love of God is being poured out within our hearts through the Holy Spirit.